Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for those people who have their natal Venus in the 10th house of career and public recognition, public reputation. So um, this is a position that I actually have. And uh, with Venus being the goddess of love and beauty, this can indicate even a career in this arena. It's important to note though, that the mid-heaven point, the cusp of the 10th house of career, may be sometimes in a different sign than Venus. So you have to check the chart because that will also give a hint as to possible profession. So for instance, um, you might have your mid-heaven at uh, 28 degrees of Cancer and you have Venus in Leo and, you know, you have uh, two different possibilities for career, or maybe there are, there's something common there, like, for instance, an actress or an actor, um, where the, the, the water energy can help you to assume different roles. And, and the Venus in Leo is a very dramatic type of sign influence. So this kind of person can crave public admiration. The 10th house is your status in the world. And so it's like your stage for whatever you're into. Now, if you are an accountant, uh, your type of admiration is going to be a bit different than if you are a performer, obviously. And uh, so if your Venus is in Taurus and you are, and maybe your son is in Taurus too, uh, you might be wanting to be the best accountant in the area and the, the go-to accountant or something like that. But in general, this is just that desire for people to um, think of you in a way that you are a success, that you are um, somebody that they view favorably. And Venus is about harmony, so there's that additional desire for you to uh, appear in a harmonious light, um, to others. And, um, it's important to note that this is not necessarily an egoic tendency, although I guess it is on, on some level, but egoic to me just means, um, uh, based on your identity of self, uh, I would say egotistical would be more of the negative, uh, word that we would use where it's just like you just want your narcissist and you just want people to worship you or something like that. No, it just means that maybe you want to be approved of. And this goes back to, especially with Libra, the two signs that are ruled by Venus are, are Taurus and Libra and Libra especially wants that. Um, Taurus may, may too, but I always read about uh, Libra wanting that kind of, um, you know, attitude that others have of them in a favorable way. And, and, you know, I think the reason specifically Libra is because it, it rules the seventh house of partnership. So that one-on-one -on -one relationship with somebody is really more than, than Taurus, which rules the financial sector. So that's probably why. Okay. Um, your profession may be connected to, um, glamour and the arts, you know, if you think about, um, motion pictures or movies, you know, saying motion pictures sounds like from the twenties the or something, but, um, the movies is like this and Neptune rules, um, movies and all of these kind in photography. And there's like a, a very interesting thing that happens when you, capture something on camera. I've noticed this myself, just even like using your phone as a camera, your phone's camera. Um, there's like a difference. It, it, it changes into something of its own reality. Um, then when you're looking at it through your eyes and that's, what's so fascinating to me about photography. And interestingly, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus and so they have their own uh, connection as well. Venus is exalted in Pisces, and Pisces is ruled by Neptune. So um, 
I mean, this could run the gamut, though, in terms of artistic self-expression or expression um, in general. And um, glamour, we could be talking about the beauty industry. If you have planets in Libra, maybe Taurus, um, and let's say you're a person, I was going to say a woman, but there are male models, obviously. If you're a person with um, Tor a Taurus or a Libra on the ascendant, um, you may even be a, uh, a model of some sort. Um, and, um, because you may be physically attractive, sometimes, you know, having the sun in Taurus or Libra can also confer beauty. I was going to be a, um, I wanted to be a model when I was, I have Taurus rising, I wanted to be a model when I was a teenager, but I, and I even got like my, uh, you know, whatever they call that co composite picture and stuff, but I was too short. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm probably only like five, five anyway, but, um, anyway, that's for another lifetime. I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I didn't go that route. I'll tell you that much, but, um, that might be something, something that has to do with beautifying the world. Now this can even be just wanting to leave the world in a better place, you know, uh, betterment of the world, um, as the uh, impact of your career. And of course that can run the gamut, but specifically, if you want to talk about superficially, we we're just talking about the surface beauty of something, uh, anything like even like a, a, a beautician hairdresser type of a thing. And there's, it's very interesting because you can have, um, women helping you with your career, especially because Venus is feminine. Um, and, you know, I think about myself having this position and the fact that, um, most of my clients, most of my viewers on YouTube are women. I love men though. So don't stop watching or getting rings from me, men. But, um, but that's just how it is with this type of, with spiritual topics, women gravitate or yoga classes, women gravitate towards that. Maybe it's even, I mean, if you have a more vigorous, um, chart, maybe like Mars in the fifth house and you're very athletic or Mars in the first or something, and even in the sixth house, you might be a personal trainer and you're trying to beautify, make other people attractive through your profession. So it could be something even rough and tumble a little bit where you're kind of, you know, breaking a sweat, but still the outcome or the goal is beauty of some sort. And, um, and you have a charming manner that attracts followers. So Venus can, um, give a person charm and it can actually have a hypnotizing effect. Uh, you know, um, I didn't see this, uh, this is, I want to give a shout out to astrologyk.com for, these, uh, key, uh, attributes for this house. I didn't see them mention something that I believe I've seen before, which is that people in position of authority may, um, may help you may be very helpful. So people who hold that power can help you. They mention colleagues, harmonious relationships with colleagues. And I am, um, you know, when I do these, I tend to, um, just, uh, put in my own words. So just to, to let you know, because, um, sometimes when you put things in your own words, you, you may not be, you know, expressing it in exactly how the site expresses it. So, uh, don't, don't blame them, you know, blame me if, if anything, but there's not really blame. It's just, it is what it is. Um, So, you know, one thing that I wanted to say about this, or something I wanted to say about um, colleagues and followers, um, it, it was something about, wow, it's so weird, I can't find it. But anyway, um, yeah, alluring charm, alluring charm. And this is something that with the 10th house is that can benefit, I mean, somebody who's in show business this could give you 
a following um, that some other actor may not have. You think of somebody like Daniel Day-Lewis, who's like an amazing modern day actor. Well, I don't know if he has like fans that are just like, uh, I, I wouldn't say obsessed, but you know, just really following his every move. He's just like a really good actor. But um, somebody who's like more of a celebrity, that kind of thing, I, I kind of see it like that because there's almost like a superficial quality to it. There's an image. And this person, you may be um, uh, married, they said married to your work. And they used that phrase and they had it in quotes, married. And then I realized, yes, because Venus rules the seventh house of marriage. So um, does that mean that you're obsessed with your work? No, I think it means that you are what you're doing because that is your image. Uh, the 10th house is your image. So um, an example how this can work for, let's say it's somebody who's already like a celebrity. And I'll just use a woman as an example. And she um, became a celebrity uh, maybe she was on a popular show or in a popular movie and she was very beautiful. And as she gets, got older, she started to, her appearance started to change. And then she may be, maybe that creates an obsession with looking, preserving that image that you initially had. So when we see all these people that get plastic surgery and we think that they have really just totally, ruined, you know, what they look like, why would they do that? Well, a lot of times it will be because they're trying desperately to remain how people remember them. Even if it doesn't look real or, you know, if they're not accomplishing that, they still are very concerned. And I said obsessed. What if you have Venus in conjunction with Pluto in the 10th house? <laughs> then that is really the case. And I have a video about Venus in conjunction with Pluto that you can check out, or even a score. Well, it, it would have to be, I would say, especially if it's a conjunction and they're both in the 10th house. To be honest with you, that could even be somebody who sleeps their way to the top. Um, if you have that conjunction, uh, or the casting couch, if you're in the entertainment field, well, that's sleeping your way to the top, I guess. And the other thing too, is that, um, In that particular case, it would be somebody who is very obsessed with um, power, success. So, you know, utilizing by any means necessary, that kind of thing. Another thing I just realized is that, and I didn't, I didn't see it in the site that I went to. I think I remember reading somewhere that Venus in the 10th may be somebody who wants to just kind of... <laughs> cut to the chase and get all the way to the top of the, their field. And they don't, they want to take the easy way out. And that makes sense to me. Um, you know, they don't want to have to really work hard at achievement. They want to just have it be easy. Venus is very languid. Venus is, is, you know, Venus likes to chill. Venus doesn't want to get her hands dirty. So if you have Saturn in the 10th house, then you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get down to business. And you really believe that it takes hard work to achieve your goals. Venus thinks you can just turn on the charm and make it happen. And that's why sometimes Venus may take shortcuts. Anything that, you know, so that's why I say with that, if, if there's like a Pluto connection, watch out for uh, that obsession for success that you're willing to do um, underhanded things or just um, uh, use your sex appeal. Like even a square or something like that, an opposition, could could certainly play into that as well, where the, the person is um, wanting wanting to be that 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 admired person. Um, for nefarious, for, for, you know, for, because of greed, um, uh, or power or things like that. Lust of power, lust of greed, <laughs> lust of greed. Um, you have wonderful networking skills. 
Uh, so this can help you again, that can help you get ahead too. If you can reach out to other people, you know, um, Venus, one of the houses that Venus rules, the seventh house is connected to public relations. So I'm assuming that's where that's coming from. Just that, you know, ability to, to convey things in a pleasing manner and get what you want, which is success in this house. Uh, I thought this was interesting. They said a warm mother daughter, possibly because there are other factors, a warm mother daughter relationship. Sometimes there can be rivalry here. I don't understand. I don't know why they, they think there could be rivalry, but I will say maybe the competitive nature of the 10th house. I don't know, but, um, I'm assuming they're saying mother because um, uh, some astrologers believe the 10th house rules the mother. I would say the father more than the mother. Um, and, um, I don't think if you're, a, a female that you're going to have a rivalry with your father. Uh, so, <laughs> so I don't know what that's all about. Um, but, uh, definitely I think it could mean that your father is the one that you have a harmonious relationship, especially if you have um, a split there and one parent is more uh, favorable to you or helps you out more. This the, the 10th house can be authority figures, but the father can also, it's also, maybe that's why it's connected to it. And even though sometimes the mother is more of the authority figure, I still believe in the masculine feminine polarity of what the houses represent. I mean, this is the outer world of the, um, you know, the, the, the career sector versus the home front of the fourth house, which is associated with nurturing in the mother, you know? So anyway, um, that's very interesting. What else do we have here? Now, this was, um, really, um, something I, I thought was great was I just, put this, um, verbatim, uh, because this is certainly true for me. And it's said as warm and, and endearing as Venus here express expresses there, it says express there tends to remain an enigmatic detachment from the public and a terminal elusiveness about their character. <laughs> and that's certainly true of me because I'm here. I am, I'm posting this this uh, video and you, you know, you don't see me and I have that kind of elusiveness and I don't know why that is. I really don't. Um, may, a Capricorn rules this house and they think Capricorn is detached. I have, um, I have my midheaven in Aquarius and Venus in Aquarius. So that certainly could be a uh, detached emotion, you know, uh, a detachment from the public, but I don't know why they're, they're saying, Venus here in general represents this. One possibility is that it's really referring to the fact that this is um, the public. So it's kind of um, impersonal at the same time as it is charming. So there's, so maybe it's, it's like, because it's um, connected to, uh, the public at large, that it's not going to be personal to one specific individual. And then the other thing that I wanted to, to note is that you may be, you may find yourself with an older partner and there again, and that actually happened with me. My partner's 11 years older than I am. Um, now they said who is established and I put in parentheses high birth what I mean by that is they may be somebody who comes from <laughs> what we call a good family or a, you know, a family of, um, a renowned, a family of, um, like a family of, um, a higher, um, uh, status in society. So maybe somebody who comes from a wealthy family, a well-established family, a family that has like, you know, if the, if their parents made their name somehow, um, and, um, 
the, the, the idea of being older comes from the fact that Saturn rules the 10th house. So Venus rules relationships and Saturn is the 10th house. And I'm talking about serious relationships. So there's that. So that was something I hadn't um, seen before. And I find that very interesting. So anyway, I didn't expect to go on for 20 minutes about this. I didn't think there would be so much with this house, but I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.